Hi, you're no doubt here to learn how to print chinchilla with a stock ender. So I'm just gonna get right to the settings because that's probably most important to you. Uh, 235C on the hot end, 40C on the bed was plenty. 115% flow, uh, 22 millimeters per second with no retract. So for the first layer, no fan. And then for the second and after layers, 100% fan. And then lighten up the extruder tension as much as you can. This uh, chinchilla is 75A durometer. And uh, let me show you some of those things on the machine. So this is a finished part that I just got done. It's very tall, it's nine and a half inches tall and you can see it's definitely soft. This is just a comparison so you can see. Uh, this is a small test piece that I make re you know, frequently. Uh, this is the chinchilla, it's very flexible. And compare that to a Sane Smart 95A. That's this here, you can see it's less flexible. And when I really compare the two, you can't even tell that the Sane Smart is flexible. And again, this says 95 Shore A. I also have some Tronxy, which is comparable. And just so you have a tell for reference here's PLA PLA is definitely rigid so this is the Sane Smart Sane Smart chinchilla it's definitely soft stuff so uh, I had to bump up the extrusion here's my first part I made it was lightly extruded you can kind of see I don't know how well you can see but it has some under extrusion going on there. And when I pulled it up off the bed, which it stuck really well, it pulled the bottom layer up. So I went to 110%. You can see I stretched it a little too far and it's egg shaped now. 110% wasn't quite enough. So that's why I came, arrived at that 115% extrusion flow for there. And then uh, this is an Ender 3V2. But you can see I have the screw here backed all the way out so that spring is as long as it can get on the extruder tension. And it does squeeze it quite a bit. It squishes in quite a bit, but didn't have any, I didn't have any problems right here with material trying to squeeze out. You can see I have this lit from above at the top is kind of, the layers aren't great. And that's because as it's printing, and I'll show you some images, as you can see here, it, when it's printing, the nozzle is moving and it's flexing the top. So you, these top layers aren't great. This is kind of a test print. It's a golf club grip. So I'm going to show you here how tough it is to get off the bed. And it's stuck pretty good, but it does tear off. It's starting to cool off now. Came off clean. Um... This is completely hollow all the way down to the bottom. It does have a couple dimples in the side, which I can see bulge through a little bit. It's pretty nice stuff though. You can see the lower layers, there was a couple blips. Not too bad though. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what happened there, but as the farther you get up, the wobblier it got. And this is nine and a half inches tall, 241 millimeters i have heard and read that direct drive extruders are helpful but all metal hot ends can be problematic because they don't have the ptfe tubing going all the way to the nozzle and the filament can get stuck there i don't know if that's so much of a problem with this chinchilla stuff it's pretty slippery uh, here's a piece of it here and i can't show you that it's slippery but but i can show you that it's really stretchy. So there you have it. It's pretty easy stuff to print. I was surprised. It's expensive, but I think it's worth it. So give it a shot. Let me know how it goes in the comments. Hey guys, if you like my content, please subscribe. Help me reach my goal of $1.65 on YouTube. Thank you.